what it costs stability, why it's important for seniors, its role in uh, improving balance, strength, and falls prevention, um, a practical demonstration of different techniques without the Wii and also with the Wii. So the concept of core stability is not just uh, linked to a machine or a, a gaming system, but rather it's a, a, a lifestyle approach. Just as preventing falls, improving balance has to be a lifestyle approach for it to work. We're aiming to promote a lifestyle approach. Okay. Uh, we want to also look at the effect of footwear on core stability because that's pretty interesting and pretty relevant as well. And uh, Nathan will uh, give us quite a lively demonstration of that. And as I've already mentioned, we fit as a tool to promote core stability and general exercise, which can be used for groups or individually. Okay. So the important thing is to define what the core or the core stability is. How many of you, you have actually come across the term core stability or core? If you just a raise of hands, just to, yeah? What about if it's more um, sort of uh, sophisticated way? Pilates, have you heard of Pilates? Yeah? Yeah? Yoga, believe it or not, thousands of years ago, Hatha Yoga is about body, mind and intellect, particularly the body. And core stability, though not mentioned, is a very important and integral part of Hatha Yoga as well. Uh, core stability is essential to decrease the risk of falls and injuries amongst seniors. What about falling, as in not worrying about falling sometimes? Yeah, there's a few. So the important thing with anything, whether it's medical or anything else in life, prevention is the best cure or treatment. The core consists of a set of deep muscles, we mentioned all that, and the core stability. And as I said, uh, we'll look at some simple techniques to develop in order to improve your strength and balance. And we'll use the Wii Gaming System to demonstrate in effective ways to work out the core. And we look forward to teaching a practical and effective way of improving your balance and strength. With spinal support, muscles, organs and postures. Now all of these things are interrelated, okay? Starting off with intra-abdominal pressure. Um, the important thing to remember is uh, the spine is not just a structure, but it's supported by a variety of structures, ligaments, muscles, tendons, and so on. But there's also the effects of the abdominal or the stomach muscles, which act like a bag inside the stomach. If you remember your basic schooling, um, if you inflate a bag, it, uh, it, it, it creates pressure. So in other words, if you contract or learn to use certain muscles, it creates pressure and support. If you don't use the muscles, the spine is like a, a tower, it's on its own, and it's weakened, and it's more likely to be unstable and uh, cause injuries. Okay? Muscles, I've told you about, uh, are interrelated with spinal support, and there are groups of muscles, which I'll briefly show you. And inside the abdomen, there's organs, so muscles and organs are also important. Posture is important. We've all heard about posture, sitting properly, and all that, but it's much more interesting than that. Posture is a very dynamic thing. It's not something we just do in sitting. We do it in standing, we do it in walking, we do it in eating, we do it in sleeping. Everything in life we use posture, sometimes consciously, sometimes subconsciously. Okay? I've talked to you about the basic spine, and the feet is the important thing. Just as they've often said that the eye is the window to the soul, the feet is the window to cause stability. So often when you look at people's footwear or how they walk, you'd be surprised to realize whether they have core stability or they don't. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't think about that. That's very important. Okay, I mentioned about some muscles. Uh, basically, we're talking about muscles around the stomach or the abdomen. Okay, and uh, there's a group of them. We can start off with what's called the external abdominal oblique. Okay, Nathan, do you want to demonstrate where the external abdominal oblique is? Yourself? It's, it's like putting your hand in your pocket. It goes it goes around, around from the bottom of the ribs, goes down to the pelvis. So that's one layer. Okay. And the next one is the rectus abdominis, which is the muscle of the front. The front, yes. That's the one which I don't have a six pack, but imagine it. <laughs> He's far too modest. And then the, the next, the next, next one is the transverse abdominis. Uh, which is located under the obliques. So, so there's, uh, there's, there's the transverses is the deepest layer. So can you imagine a cylinder? Just imagine there's a barrel or a cylinder deep inside. That's your deepest layer. There's another layer just in between that, which is the uh, uh, oblique internus. So 
there are actually three, three layers which join to the one in the middle. So there's one going down in your pocket, there's one coming up from below, and deepest is the one going around like a corset, like a girdle. Okay, so you see, but that is what actually contracts. So that is the key one. It's not the ones outside, it's the key one is the one inside. That is like a cylinder that contracts and compresses with your diaphragm above and with your pelvic flow below. So this along with some deep muscles which is called the uh, iliosoas, which come from the side of your spine to the front of your hip. These together are the ones that make everything tight inside. Look at the race horses, look at the cheetahs, all their stomachs are nice and tight. Look at runners and gymnasts, the same. So this is what gives them the strength. Or, or another way to look at it, look at the Bollywood stars now, look at Deepika Padukone, okay? <laughs> Compared to the old generation, we like Hema Malini, we like all the old uh, actresses, they've got much more sleek, cheetah-like looks now. Perhaps not for stability. Okay, shall we have the next one? Okay. As Naven had mentioned, uh, the abdominal muscles and the organs fall uh, back, which I've mentioned, which by learning to contract with core stability exercises, you put less strain on the spine. So that's an important, okay? Posture, I've told you about posture. Can you see there's two postures there? Which one is the good one and which is the bad one? Have a guess. You look at where you're opening for your earrings. That should be above your shoulder, in line with your elbow, going through the hip. So if you were a builder and building a building, if you were making a building, you want to make sure that the building is standing straight. So that has to be in line through the back of the knee and through the ankle. For most of us not. So when you look at the second one, that's falling in the front. And then it's all out of weight. When you get older, you lose weight. You know, I think everyone agrees generally. I mean, there's a period of weight gain, but generally there's, there's a weight loss as well. And the reason that there's weight loss is not because of fat disappearing, but rather muscle breaking down and shrinking. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So even for younger people, the key to weight loss and also to prevent diabetes is not to lose uh, only fat, but to replace that fat with muscle weight. So the important thing is not to lose weight, but to maintain muscle mass at the expense of fat. So that's the important thing. And a lot of studies have shown that um, weight loss of, in, in terms of muscle loss is not inevitable with age. It's simply, they're all saying that if you don't lose it, don't use it, you will lose it. That's very true. Meaning that as we get older, we don't have the active muscle uh, use that we do, and doesn't necessarily need to be in active sports or running, but simple day-to-day -day things. And the important thing, as one of you had pointed out, is in the second picture, the, the tummy is sort of sticking out. If you look at the curvature of the stomach, uh, it's a lot longer than that. So that affects what we call length-tension relationships of muscles, which means that if the muscles are aligned properly, they work better. But if they're not aligned properly, they don't work as well. And with time, poor posture can cause weakness of the muscle with natural decline, but also because of poor alignment and poor length tension relationships. Okay? He got the elderly people to do simple exercises <coughs> where they were taking weight. Rama always has been telling me, you know, you have to do weight bearing exercises. It keeps the muscles working. Same also like a push-up on the wall, something simple. And not only did he find that the muscles went well, but the bone density improved. Did I say something? The bone density improved. So in fact, you can reverse your aging. There you have it. You can stay young forever if you wish, Mr. Okay, so many of you see, you see a lot of people with the pelvis tilted like this. So everything comes forward. Then the muscles that are along the spine, the muscles along the spine, they have to hold your spine which is 2 kilos and your head which is 5 kilos. Now they get tired quickly. So all the other large muscles come in and they start to compress you. So this is why it's very important to keep working because otherwise these muscles lock up. 
they lock, 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 and keep locked, and then everything, the system starts to go down and down and down. But you can reverse it. So tell me, how many of you would drink at least two glasses of water a day? Okay, there's quite a few. Very good. Very good. Okay. How many of you are using Himalayan salt or black salt? A few. No, normal, normal salt has got an anti-caking agent, 554, 553. This is aluminum compounds. Now, these compounds are not good for you. So, if you can change your salt, this will help you. Drink water, have the right salt, okay? Unless the doctor says for blood pressure or other things, but even with blood pressure, if you've got Himalayan salt, you find that it actually doesn't affect it. But this is very interesting. Some studies have been done. Some studies have been done. Anyway, we'll, we'll get on to this loss of muscle. Well, the doctor was saying how you can lose your muscle, okay? So they have shown, I just told you, Eric Rosario showed that you can increase your muscle bulk even in the elderly who are in nursing homes. You follow? So what we have to do as doctors, as, as uh, therapists, we have to look at what is working for people. Because normally what we do is we study disease. We want to study health. Yoga studies health. Yoga has studied health for thousands of years. How to keep you healthy. If you don't go down and squat, if you don't go all the way, the muscles become shorter, you don't extend them as much. So many people can go down, but they can't come up. Yes? <laughs> and that's the problem with falls. <laughs> so you have to use your muscles. If you don't use them, they're going to lose them. So this is the, this is the thing, not, not that, uh, you know, other things are important. Okay. So the loss is not inevitable. And what we're going to show you is some useful tools to improve balance and prevent falls. And we're going to show you what happens. I think you know what happens if you fall. Okay? So most of the falls are because our joints become stiff. If you don't move your joints, if you don't move your joints through their complete range of motion, then they become stiff. So if they become stiff, what's going to happen? Tight hips send you on trips that you never paid for and don't have a visa for. <laughs> okay. So don't trip well, yes, because your joints are very stiff. You understand? So you have to work at getting your joints flexible. This is important. Because if you fall then, if you haven't been exercising, your bones are weak and then you, it takes longer to heal and all these things, right? Uh, osteoporosis and what it does. So if the muscles are not pulling on the bone, the calcium goes out of the bones. That's why it's important to use your muscles. See, we all go back and relax. Oh, I'm relaxing in the couch. But if you relax like that, then the posture is not going to be good. You're going to get stiff. Yes. And uh, it's not just about intake of calcium or your parathyroid hormone levels, but it's also important to remember your muscle mass. And the key thing to remember is that not just to lose fat, which is very difficult, but importantly, even if you can't lose fat, balance the fat with more muscle mass. You'd be surprised any activities that put on muscle mass uh, gets rid of fat without the effort. So the more we think about losing fat, the more difficult it is. But if we concentrate on building muscle mass, strength and flexibility, fat will take care of itself. Okay? If we just think about previous generations, if we go back, I know, uh, back to our dadis and dadas and all these people back, generations who worked in the fields or had a very active life. Very few of them worried about, you know, glycemic index or how many rotis I can eat or should I eat basmati rice or pony rice or whatever, or carbohydrates or more protein. It was very simple. I had a good meal and I worked hard and everything took care of itself. So the key is we live in the modern century, we're a 21st century people, but the old adage of exercise and muscles is the most important thing. Fat will take care of itself. Okay? So this picture again demonstrates postural creep simply by holding the bag. So the first person has good alignment, um, which is correlating with the first set of images I showed you. Whereas the second person has that same poor alignment in holding the bag. So as a result of that, not only are they putting more stress on the bone and the muscles, but their posture is literally creeped from being upright to being 
forwards. And there's a lot of factors, there's muscles, there's posture, and also the, the way you carry bags and other things that are important. As you get older, you sit down and you don't do anything. Seniors these days are much more active. And with the aging population that's continuing, I think we're going to find a lot more people who want to do a lot more. And why shouldn't you? All your younger days, you were sacrificing and doing things for your kids and everyone. It's now your time. It's your uh, time to show what you can do. And what we want to promote is not about just accepting that time takes everything, but rather, why don't we be active? Why don't we make the most out of what we've got? Because we have time now, or you have time now, and make the most of your time. Important for preventing falls is activation of muscles, we said the core muscles, endurance, which comes with more better alignment and more efficiency, uh, improvement uh, measurable, which uh, we can measure in terms of the number of falls, and also how you feel more confident, um, reduction of injuries, which follows, and it's all about energy and efficiency. So we're, we're not reinventing the wheel, but we're looking at the wheel and trying to use it as it was designed originally. So the spine at the back, we're going back to the days of our daddy and dadas and seeing how they worked and how uh, efficient they were and how we've changed with time and how uh, our posture has been affected by the way we sit and the way we do everything in daily living. And this is not just for seniors, this is something that can be applied throughout the stages of life from you know, childhood right up to seniors. Just we want to throw three quick activities demonstrating in a practical sense. Throwing, hitting a ball, rolling chapatis, and a golf is lift. Okay, Nate. <laughs> what do you see? Did you bring a rolling pin? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, uh, one second. You might do this. You drop the pointer. Got it? Yeah. All right. So what, what we're doing here is, it's a very simple thing. You, you sometimes wonder, well, it's too hard for me to do this. So what we're trying to show you is, uh, when, you work, when you're doing any physical work, you can make it easier. And the physical work can be easier if you know what, if you understand your body. If you've done yoga, if you've done other things like that, or if you've done Pilates, and you understand how your body works, I mean, if I was just to do this, this might fall here, correct? Yeah. So most of you, if you took a ball and you just did that, you might fall here. But if, if, I, if I did this, where is it going to end up? On the, on the wall. So here you go, that's it. Okay, so here. <laughs> Whereas, if you think about cricket, <laughs> so we're not only taking uh, strengthening our muscles, but we're actually activating using our muscles. How many of you have played tennis in your younger days? Okay, or at least watch tennis, okay? Quite a few. So the great tennis players generate their strength and force from the abdomen or the stomach muscles and the legs. So they, you often see when they play backhands and so on, they're having a fluid motion. Or if you go back to the days of Ajit Vareka or uh, Eknath Ekna Solka or Sunil Gavaskar, they were taking big steps and playing their shots, okay? None of this IPL nonsense, okay? So you can see the point is that they were utilizing their entire body, their stomach and their legs rather than just flicking a little bit, okay? None of this pallu scoop or uh, other shots that had come down. So that's the important thing. Similarly, when you do activities of daily living, you use core stability. So I'll just, I'll just demonstrate uh, very quickly for you. So uh, as, as, uh, as a gentleman or, or a lady in our senior years, quite often you find you're doing different things at home. And so you don't have to set aside extra time. You don't need extra time to do exercise. A lot of people think I need more time. If I had time, I'll do it. No. While, while you're doing the dishes, you can be just holding that posture and you know, I've got this hand here, so I can't wash properly, but, but you can be just doing a little bit of a squat as you're doing it. Okay, you don't have to do, if, you, if you're doing the vacuuming, you can do your stretches. You can do your stretches. As you're doing your dusting, you can do your bow pose of yoga, right? If you're wiping the windows, you can do that also. So you can, you can use whatever you do in, in your daily living. You don't have, you don't need more time. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And, and then what you can do is you can work like this, you're rolling the chapatis, so you make sure, okay, I'll keep it. 
I'll, 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 I'll keep this tight. So what we have to do is, the transverses, as I said, is like a barrel. It's not getting your, don't get your, don't pull your belly button to your spine. A lot of people tell you that, no. It's here in the groin area that you pull it inside. This muscle still has to go in and out for breathing. Okay, this has to be tight and the muscles of the pelvic floor have to be tight. When you do that, you're reducing the pressure inside. And then you can bend from your hips and you can do some stretches as you're rolling chapatis. It's easy. You follow? It's all easy. With the golfer's lift, if you're worried about falling, what do the golfers do? They balance on something and they then pick up and come back. Yes? So, if you're at home, you can do that. You can bend and rest on your... You can rest your elbows on your legs. Use your legs. Every time you sit down in a chair, just sit down gently there and slowly come up. Every time you go for dinner, sit down on the couch, you're exercising. But do it, just slow it down. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. That's all. We wanted to briefly look at the effect of footwear, the good, bad and ugly of footwear, and the effects of poor footwork on muscles and core stability. Surprising, these are not the best footwear for a variety of reasons. Nathan. Okay. So, uh, what I showed, the posture I showed you, the posture I showed you which was feet parallel, bending, bending the knees a little bit, keeping them soft, turning them out, Okay, what happens, the weight goes on to the outside of your foot on the outer border, right? So with your knees turning out, the weight comes on the outside. Most people end up with flat feet and turning down. And the, So what they found, they put electrodes under the soles of the feet. They put electrodes on all the muscles along the leg and the spine. And what they found was this, when the muscles of your feet those small muscles underneath, like we got in the hand here. We same have in the feet, the foot and mouth artists, right? When those were working, when those were working, the muscles of the spine become toned and tight and actually support you. So all the muscles behind the leg, the calf, and the ones along the spine, and these ones, which I was telling you about, the transverses, pelvic floor, all those work together. When you Extend your toes. If your toes go up, the long tendons come in, or when the toes curl up, then these muscles relax, and your posture goes out of whack. You follow? So you learn to use things with your toes. Now you know this. Those of you who've lived in country or different parts of the country in India, or if you've been to Tibet or other places, the people, the, the, the Adivasis or the natives who are living there, they are slim and trim. Many of them are very old. They are carrying heavy weights and they are walking bare feet. They are walking bare feet to old age. And they don't have to be big and strong with lots of muscles. I've seen people in, in, uh, in Maharashtra when we went for hikes with three, four pots of water and they are walking and they think they are walking for miles to get the water and they are strong. So you, you see, it's, it's how you use it and condition it and get this balance, which is what we're going to show you, the balance. So when you wear footwear like this, if your toes claw or they go up like this or they become flat, you actually are not helping your spine, all right? The reason we, don't, the reason we didn't recommend uh, the flip-flops or the towel type footwear is because it, in order to keep it on your feet and prevent you tripping over, you in, uh, in unconsciously contract the muscles of your feet and uh, alter the length tension relationship, as I said, which, as I said before, the feet are the window to cause stability. So if you have bad footwear, bad posture in your foot, you're already on the back foot, literally, part of the park. Okay, so, so get, get supportive footwear, but again, you know, be careful that you're not wearing uh, orthotics or those sorts of supports 24-7. Because when you wear it all the time, your muscles don't get a chance to work. This is why they don't give belts for you these days, belts to support your back. They want you to use your own muscles. If you do get a belt, if you do get the supports, wear it off and on, intermittently, so that your muscles get a chance to work, you get a chance to rest, 
and but you also give your muscles a chance to come in and switch off because if your muscles get too tired again they will lock up so don't push it and say no 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 i didn't say that i didn't say you have to do this all the time i said every time you feel a little bit tired rest it's okay you need to lie down sometimes you need to lie down and rest take the pressure off you might have back problems other things just rest a bit and then come back again but don't let it stop you so good footwear is good and gold coins yes maybe Okay, it's just measuring a few things and then we'll start suggesting. Okay, it's important to realize there's a little dot which shows the center of gravity. So if I lean a little bit to the right, it shifts it or oh, it's calculated my center of gravity. As you can see, I lean a little bit to the left. Okay, there's 53% on the left versus 46 on the right. Okay, it just also tells me how I put pressure on my feet. Okay, and this explains what the effects of my center of gravity that's not correct. Okay. Okay, I'll be standing over there. So what it does, it actually makes you, <laughs> you just use something and it keep going. But the, the avatar you are seeing over there uh, becomes fat if you become fat, it becomes slim if you become slim. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit... Uh, yeah. Just a uh, big balance game. It's balance game. Uh, what balance game should I do? So this is an example of how we use WeFit to improve balance. So the aim of this game is to uh, move the billiard uh, ball until I tilt it. See, I'm moving from side to side, and then I'm able to uh, guide the ball to the holes and shift from left to right. Start. It's starting. Has it? The important thing, of course, stability is that with age, it's not inevitable decline, particularly decline of the muscles. It's important to know that you have muscles in your abdomen or stomach that you can develop the core, and there's varieties of ways of developing them. It can be done in daily living by posture, the way we pick up things, uh, the way we uh, lean forward, like the golf uh, lift and all those things. And at the same time, we can formally do it by different exercise activities. Pilates is well known, but in a more gentler and more appropriate way for seniors, is something like the Wii system, which can be used. It's very simple to use. We'll get it up and running shortly. Because you'd, you'd get some injury or you have some challenge, maybe you need your uh, home modified for access. Uh, so again, remember, there, there are many things. The government has a program called the Statewide Equipment uh, uh, state, uh, statewide equipment uh, provision scheme, uh, which is called SWEP for short. So if you need special modifications, ramps, steps with rails, those sorts of things, uh, grab rails, yes, the local council can do for you. You need an occupational therapist like myself to assess it. But uh, many of the, much of that can be done by your medic. Uh, under Medicare with the Enhanced Primary Care Program, where your doctor will decide if you qualify for that. There are some criteria the doctors to check if you've got multiple problems. Uh, then they may say, yes, go and see if it's your two OT. Uh, but that's under, under the Medicare system. 
but the doctor will decide that. But if you've got any things like that, then certainly uh, we can come and assess and do those, those things, get it organized for you.